Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. So this is a card game that initially, I, I gotta admit, I'm not a huge fan of card games. This one just has a weird theme on it where you're putting people in different villages. It's a two-player game, and I think it works fairly well. There's always going to be some luck of the draw of what you're able to get, but you can move people around to get your scoring cards. You have these goal cards, you're trying to get people in a certain way to score victory points, and you want to get them in certain locations, but there's constrictions on how you play them down. So it's all about moving people around the board to different locations and getting them where you want. So if somebody can kind of figure out what you're going for, it can be a little bit of block this, block that, move this, I'm moving it back. But at some point, you got to jump in and go after your thing and maybe let the other team score. Maybe that's not your strategy. Maybe that's something you would do in it. Really fun little card game. I mean, if you're looking for something that can be played two-player very easily, has good strategic decisions, and fits together really well, uh, different little powers that can come in. There's a little small expansion that comes with it that you can add in fairly easily. It gives you some different options on how to score. This may be it for you. It's got interesting decisions. It lasts about as long as you want it to. It doesn't overstay its welcome. There is a little bit of take that. There's a little bit of moving things around, but you don't know exactly what your opponent is going for. And I'm sure if you played this game like 200 times, you'd have all the cards memorized, and that might be an issue. Uh, but if you're going to play this like a normal person, you know, 10 or less times, uh, maybe played a lot, but over a lot of time where you can't memorize everything, this is going to work just fine. This is kind of a surprise for me. So I'm going to go ahead and purge, though. I mean, it's got a lot of these little card games, and they don't really fit in. My wife doesn't really like it. My wife prefers bigger, chunkier Euros. But this is a great one for you to take a look at, and one that may have been overlooked. Here we go. As you can see, it's a very small, portable box. It probably could sit if you got some cargo shorts. could probably fit in the side panel. Open up. You're going to have a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. And then you're going to have this little... First player marker if you need that for any reason. Uh, it's kind of useless for us. And then you're going to have a deck of cards, really. That's all you're going to have in here are cards. Now, you're going to have, these are going to be the places around make up in your castle. You're going to have the mission cards, which is what you're going to be trying to accomplish to get points. You can see the artwork. It's kind of plain on here. It's okay. The cards do feel pretty good in the hand. And these will be the virtuous cards, the cards that you're going to be playing. Uh, the icons are important. The text is a little small, not too bad. I mean, they are cards, uh, but the the artwork is going to repeat over and over and over and over. So every soldier looks the same in the city, but overall, very nice. I mean, it's a very cheap game. It's hard to complain of being a little bit funny about it, but yeah, these are good components. Here's the rule book. It's very small. The print's okay. The objective of what you're trying to do, the components, there's no pictures, but it's so small, it's probably why. It's just cards. Anyway, setup is over here. You can have playing the cards, kind of how to play. You have two locations. You go to the regular ones and special locations. I had a little trouble with this part of it, of how this works. I think it could have been worded a little bit better. I was able to go line, online and find the answers, but it is what it is. How to score the cards as you'll go through. How many points you need to end the game and how to win. There are also some expansion cards that are in here that was a little bit weird on how to use those. Then you have a team variant, which I didn't play. And you have a solo variant where you're just trying to score the most points. Well, book was fine. I did have a couple questions with it, though, and I need to be honest about that. So, maybe a quick overplay of how to play. You're going to have the harbor here and the castle over there. Uh, very easy. Uh, the cards are going to have little numbers in the side. This is a five. Uh, so, five fourths. And then you have this in the middle, which is your tavern, uh, which will have three on it, two, one. So, this is going to be set up a certain way. On your turn, everybody's going to have three cards to start the game on the turn, but you can definitely have more. You're going to start the game out with two mission cards. These will be what you're trying to accomplish. Eight soldiers must be present in the city. So you just want eight soldiers in the city that you can score this and gather cards from four different guilds at the magistrate's office. So each of the guilds are going to have things here and then you mark it warehouse. So this says the magistrate's office. So you want four different guilds here just for these. And there's going to be all kinds of different missions that you can have in the game. So what you're going to do on a turn is very simple. On your turn, you're going to play a card. Now, if it has a guild, it must be played to that guild. So it can go on either side that you want it to go on. If it is part of uh, one of the cards that doesn't have a guild, like the skull, then I can play it wherever I want. So whenever I play a card, I can just do what it says. This one says swap one card with any other card in different locations. So if this card was here, I could swap this, and I can get that somewhere else. 
If you remember, that mission card we were talking about was having four different guilds in different locations. So that leaves me in a situation where I'm going to need to find, uh, like this it would be a guild here. And then let's say, you know, if I had a card like this, I could go any location. So now I'm at the two, but those cards are a little bit rare. So if I'm trying to get something there, and let's say uh, there was another blue there. Well, that's not four different guilds. It's only three. But if I were to play that shopkeeper I just showed you, I could place it here, swap one card with any other card in a different location. Well, I could swap the clerk over here and get him over this location. And now I have three there on my goal to score this. Now, if, at the, after you play a card and do its power, I can then play a card if, I'm, if the requirements are met. So in this case, if there were four different, let's just say this was here, and now there are four in the magistrate's office, I can score one card. It gives me number of victory points at the bottom is one. So in a two-player game, you play into 10. Three-player game, I think you play to seven. So I would have one point, put this down in front of me, and now I've scored that card. Uh, and it, the cards are different. Discard one card from your hand. You can draw three cards. This one says draw four cards and choose one to add your hand. Discard the other three. So you can end up with a whole bunch of cards in your hand if so be. You also have the soldier cards that can come out. If three of these are present in a location, you clear everything off. Because some of the missions say, hey, you need at least four of these to be empty, etc. On your turn, very easy. You play a card. You do the power. You can play a mission card if you want. And then you draw a replacement card to your hand. Now, the other little caveat to this is the tavern. And what the tavern is going to do, it's going to be a neutral location. When you go to the tavern, you're allowed to take one of your mission cards. You're like, I can't fulfill this. It'll be very difficult. You can discard it and draw a new one. That's going to be very, very important when you go to tavern. Now, it's also important to note that if you don't want to draw a random card off the top of the deck, you can also always take one of these from the tavern and they're available to the other players. That's what the tavern is going to do. Once the first person get to a set number of points is going to be your winner. Who should buy this game? I feel like this game fits really well with the two player experience. Uh, you're gonna want a card game, something a little bit lighter, gives you some strategic decisions, has a little bit of luck in it based on the card draw, and then what gold cards you get. Some of them are harder than others, but you can get rid of those by making decisions during the game, which is helpful. So, I, you know, this, Probably isn't a mass market-esque game, but somebody's willing to put a little bit into it. There's a lot of reading on the cards. They'll be able to jump right in. So just a tad bit over gateway, I would say. Uh, but just be aware there is uh, reading and knowledgeable, a lot of cards doing a lot of different things. For us gamers, you'd be like, hey, this is a pretty simple game. And it is for most gamers. But for the non-gaming experience, I think this is a jump up for them. For me, it's going to be a purge. Nothing wrong with this game. It just didn't fit into the collection. That's it.